Hello everyone, Nevin McGuire here. I am going to show you the simplest monkfish korma. It's absolutely delicious and so quick. So we're going to make the curry in a moment, but first thing I'm going to do is show you some rice, uh, how to cook some rice. So basmati rice, one of my favorites, you can serve this with Thai jasmine rice or long grain rice. But in the saucepan here, so Mel, if you want to come right in here, we have some water, we have one stock cube. I'm going to put in some butter, you know me and the butter. So two pieces of butter, and then we're going to use a large pinch of sea salt. So this is Irish Atlantic sea salt. We also have a lovely one from Ackle sea salt, Oriel sea salt. So we have some great Irish sea salt. So just whisk this in. Now, and then we're gonna throw in the rice. And this is gonna cook away. So just whisk in the butter. So just to recap, boil in water, good pinch of salt. Make sure it's nicely seasoned, but not too salty. Uh, one stock cube and then some butter. And then in goes the rice. So the rice goes in here. We're gonna keep it on a full heat. I'm just gonna whisk this. Now I will come back and I'll whisk that. I'm gonna put the lid on that and we're gonna let that bubble away. Okay, so for our korma, we are gonna show you just a very, very simple recipe. We're doing this with monkfish, but you can use chicken and lots of other fish, which I'll talk about in a moment. First thing we'll do is just gonna dice some onion. So I'm just gonna get my knife. And we're gonna show you just how to dice some onion. So this is a really, really simple recipe. So you can slice or dice the onion. So I've just peeled the onion, keeping it nice and flat. So Mel, if you wanna zoom in here, it's my camera woman, Amelda. Thank you, that's my wife. So you go three quarters to the end of the onion, make one incision and watch the fingers, and then hold it as if you like a little claw. So when you're cutting, curve your fingers like that. And I don't want, I want nice little bits of onion. So proper, we call this a little broom was here. So it's one of the most asked questions in the cookery school is how do you chop the onion? So I'm just gonna finish this off, watch the fingers. Curve them all the time. And if you notice, I'm not looking at the camera, I'm looking at my fingers. So now, okay, I'm gonna do the other half. So the same again, three quarters to the end of the onion. And then make an incision. Half is fine. If the onion's very big, you can make three incisions. And then just curve your fingers and just cut this. It doesn't have to be too big or too small. You know, I'm just using a regular onion. Just gonna throw my eye every so often over the rice. So I'll give that a whisk just in a moment. Okay, my pan is on heating. We're gonna use some rapeseed oil and then I'm gonna crush some garlic and I'm gonna grate some ginger into this. So just a nice little slice here. So watch the fingers when you're doing this. Okay, all right. So rapeseed oil goes in. Nice good drizzle. I like rapeseed oil because you get a really nice high smoke point. So just lift off the lid from the rice, give it a whisk. So now if you can zoom in there, what's the daisy? So just give that a nice little whisk there. Perfect, okay. So that just stops it from kind of sticking together. Okay, so the pan is on low, even though it looks to be really, really hot and smoking. We're gonna put in our onion. Oh, that's what I like to hear. Nice sizzle of this. Just gonna turn that off for a minute, because I just need to prepare my garlic. So I'm gonna put lots of garlic into this, and then we're gonna put lots of ginger into this. So I'm gonna crush my garlic, so rocking it over and back. If you like garlic, a really good tip is to peel two or three bowls of garlic, and then what you can do is you can um, put them in the food processor with a little bit of rapeseed oil and make a garlic puree. So just scrape that in there, so that's two cloves. So garlic, of course, is so good for you. So we're gonna put in the rest of this, crush this here, and the same for this here. Now, so turn back on the heat. Just have it low, nice and low there. And then just crush the rest of that garlic. Now, here we go. So that's the first stage of making the korma. We're gonna give this a little stir. Now if you have a little look in there, I'm just gonna get a nice little bit of caramelization. You just zoom in there for a minute, Amela. I'm just gonna get my whisk here. So I do it So this is on microplane. So this is great because I peel the ginger, really good tip at home when you're using uh, ginger is to peel it, wrap it in cling film and freeze it. So grate this here and watch the fingers when you're doing this. Okay. And the nails. So this goes in here. Lots of ginger, love ginger. So look at the technique of this grater. We're putting it on top of the skillet pan. It's a really nice wide pan. Scrape all that ginger out and then stir this. Now let's turn up the heat a little bit. Okay, 
Lovely. I'm gonna put a little piece of butter. No me in the butter. But it gives so much flavor, so it does. So now we're gonna talk about our spices. So we're using these lovely Simply Better spices. These are all organic. So they're from a company in Athlone called Oco. So we're gonna put in first of all turmeric. Now turmeric is a really, really intensely uh, colored and flavored. If you look at that in Melda, we're gonna pop this into the pan. I'm gonna put in two of these. So it's two large spoonfuls. And then this is some mild curry powder. So if you like a hot korma, what you can do is you can put in, I'm gonna put in three of these. You can put in some chili, you can put in a little bit of harissa spice if you want, just so it gives a nice little bit of a kick. Now I'm gonna cook that off for a minute. Just tidy up here. So just cook out this. So Mel, if you come right in here, good woman. So just to recap, we have our onion, our ginger, and our garlic, and all the spices. Now, first thing we put in is these beautiful tin tomatoes. Okay, so these are the chopped tomatoes, part of the Simply Better collection, and they're San Marzano tomatoes. So they're from Puglia, which is the best place, they reckon, in the world for tomatoes. So it's gonna be a bit noisy. Yay! So scrape all that out. Stir that through. So this is just the base for our corner here. So the onion is in there. We have our ginger and we have our garlic. Beautiful. So just give that a nice stir there. Now, coconut milk. One of my favorite companies is a company called Tygo. They're based in Wexford. So they do the most wonderful organic coconut milk. It's thick, it's creamy, it's delicious. Look at this. And we're gonna put all this in here. It's gonna get a spoon here. So they also do the most beautiful rice, jasmine rice. They do the um, Thai curry paste and absolutely gorgeous. I really, really like them. For a little bit of sweetness, mango chutney. So this is gonna give sweetness and then we finish it with some lime. So I'm just gonna put this in here. Okay, so this is some mango chutney from a company called Wet to Preserves. They make the most wonderful jams and chutneys. They really are good. So stir this through really, really gently. So you can see this is coming together really nice. Now I'm gonna have a little look at the rice. See how that is cooking up, okay. That's gorgeous. Now I'm gonna show you a little tip here, okay? I'm gonna give the rice one more minute, then I'm gonna switch it off and I'm not gonna to touch it until we're ready to serve up. So we're just gonna stir through all this lovely coconut milk here. I always recommend when you're doing this, if you double up this recipe and then you can freeze half of it. It freezes really, really good. Now we will put monkfish, but the monkfish goes in towards the end because it doesn't take only a couple of minutes to cook this. So just stir this through here. Okay, so Mel, if you just zoom in there, you're getting a lovely color from the spices, the flavor, the turmeric, you have the garlic in there, you have the ginger in there, you have the mild curry powder, and you have the coconut milk, which is really, really important. Now, there is one ingredient I am gonna put in, and I've already cooked this, and I'll tell you why I did this. Normally what I do is I put the sweet potato in at the start. So I've just peeled the sweet potato, this is it here, with a potato peeler, cut into nice big chunks, and I've literally steamed it for about maybe four minutes. So it's not fully cooked, but it's, um, it's uh, nearly cooked, so it is. So I'm just gonna pop that in here. So if you wanna come in nice and close, you can put cauliflower into this, you can put butternut squash, you can put lots of other different ingredients uh, into this. Uh, for texture, when I'm gonna talk to you now, I'm gonna switch the rice off. So that's it off there. We put in the butter, we put in the stock cube, and then don't touch it, don't be tempted to lift the lid off. You want lovely, uh, flavorsome rice. So stir it through your sweet potato, which is coming through nicely here. Okay, now we're gonna put in our chickpeas. These are a can of chickpeas. I've just got them, drained them, rinsed them through cold water, and these give great flavor. I've made this many times, and some people say, oh, I'm not a fan of chickpeas, but when they taste this, they actually really do like it. So that's a full can. So, tomatoes, coconut milk, chickpeas. Now, we need to just stir this through here. We will put our fish in in a moment. And then what we need to do is finish it with some limes. Let's talk about our fish. So we have a couple of monk tails, okay? So I had some of these um, in the freezer. Um, you can get this done from your, mush, your, monk, your fishmonger, pardon me. Uh, monkfish is a really kind of meaty fish and it's a really good fish to use. So I have about two large tails. So the membrane is off, they're off the bone and they're cut into small little pieces. And Mel, if you can just zoom in there, you can just see them. We call them little medallions there. So what I did was to frost it in your fridge overnight, um, very, very nice and gently, and then just cut it or you can get fresh monkfish. It depends on the time of year. So I'm just literally gonna stir in the monkfish now. Okay, so just scoop this all in and then stir this through. So you can do this with chicken. If someone doesn't like monkfish, 
you know, you don't have to put monkfish into this uh, curry. You can use uh, some prawns if you want to. You can make this vegetarian. So Mel, if you just zoom in there again, good woman. You're doing a great job. So this is our monkfish in here cooking away. And then we're just gonna stir that there. Now we're gonna chop some basil and then we're gonna finish that. So I'm gonna bring that to the boil. I'm gonna put the lid in that and then the juice of the lime, which is really important or else it's too sweet. Cause think of it, you have sweet potato, you have mango chutney and that. So they're all kind of sweet. So just, I'm gonna get my lime ready to be juiced. Okay, so I won't forget that. And then some fresh basil. So I'll just grab the fresh basil here. Just some lovely fresh basil. Or you can use some coriander. Now normally you wouldn't chop fresh basil, but I think this is a really beautiful herb. And one of my favorite herbs, to be honest with you. So let me show you the technique when you're chopping any kind of herb. So I'll just wipe down here, because we have the onion and the ginger. Always keep the place nice and clean if you can. So just with our basil here, roll it all up. And then you're gonna curve your fingers, and then you're gonna cut this really, really thin. Watch the fingers when you're doing this. And now, so coriander will work really, really well. Now, if you leave the basil like that, what happens, it goes black because it oxidizes, but we don't want that to happen. So we're just going to make sure it's up nice and full, perfect. Okay, we're gonna sprinkle that in there. And we're gonna stir this through. So remember the sweet potatoes have been blanched off. The monkfish just takes literally a couple of minutes to cook through. So we're just getting a nice bit of texture. Some salt in this, always season at the last minute. And then make sure you taste it. So just let that just stir it through there. So lime, always with limes is trying to get them really nice and kind of juicy. So just kind of rub them a little bit in your hands. We're going to squeeze them. This little juicer here is a fantastic little piece of kit. And then we're going to juice that. So just to recap on the spices that I've used, this is the mild curry powder. Okay, the name of the company is Oko. They're absolutely wonderful, so it is. And if you like it spicy, you can put in chili, you can put in some harissa spice, because some people do like spicy curry. The twins love this. If you were to do this with chicken, I'd get a chicken breast. So th say this was the chicken breast, and I'd slice it nice and thinly, and I'd actually poach the chicken raw in the curry. And that could take in maybe an extra 10 to 12 minutes, whereas monkfish will cook really, really fast. And um, also, if you'd left over chicken, it will work beautiful. So you just get your nice quality assured Irish chicken, roast it, uh, enjoy it, whatever way you want. And if you have any leftover, then you just simply pop it in to your curry. So it's great for leftovers now. So the full lime is so important. Don't forget this. Lemon, I don't think is as good as lime. That's just a personal thing. And then if you zoom in there, you'll see the lovely color. The monkfish should be very nearly cooked. It's gonna give that another minute. And remember what I've done with the sweet potato, I have pre-cooked it in boiling water. So normally what I would do when I make this, even at home, I'd get the likes of uh, the sweet potato, the ginger, the garlic, cook that all off, usually a little bit of oil and butter together. And then what I would do is let that soften for a minute and then the spices, and then the sweet potato would be in for the spices. Uh, the good tomatoes, they're invaluable. So we should be re very nearly ready to serve. We're gonna have a look at our rice. So Mel, if you wanna zoom in here, I just wipe my hands. Okay, so there we go. Here's your lovely fluffy rice. And if you let that even for a few more minutes there, you can just kind of scrape it away there. That's the stock. The butter gives lovely butterness to it. And then of course you have salt, so you don't need to add anything else to this. So just before I serve this up, I'm gonna give this one more stir and then it's ready. So if you wanted to make this ahead, you could make your korma sauce have it ready in the fridge, warm it up, and then just pop in your monkfish. You can use prawns, you can use hake, cod, all those kind of fish would work. Fish I wouldn't use is probably maybe some salmon or trout. It's an oily fish, I'd rather use a white fish for this. But what you can do is get some diced, uh, these were small monkfish. So let's just have a little look here, Mella. So one other thing I forgot to mention is that baby spinach is gorgeous in this. I don't have any here. So you could just throw in a handful of baby spinach now. And if you want this vegetarian, Cauliflower works really well. Butternut squash, pumpkin, those kind of things work really well. So we're ready to serve. I'm just gonna spoon on the rice. This is very rustic. It's the way I like to cook at home. And I know Amel and the twins will just enjoy this with some rice. So that's your rice on one side. You can put in the middle, put the monkfish. There's no right or wrong way to serve this. I'm gonna switch off the korma 
And now if you zoom in here and you can just see that. You can see that lovely, lovely color from the turmeric from the tomatoes. So I'm just going to try and put this onto the plate without dropping it. So that's our mugfish. It's been nice and quiet. Madeline's getting hungry. The twins are hungry. We're all going to get fed. This is going to be our tea this evening. So you just make sure with the sweet potato that it is cooked because I had mine cooked in boiling water and um, just for about four minutes. So I peeled it, cut it nice and big chunks. Lots of that lovely sauce. And how good does that look? Zoom in there, man, look at that. Now, you'll not be hungry after that. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you tried this recipe. Uh, this monkfish um, korma will keep in the fridge for about two or three days. It's always nice or fresh, to be honest with you. But it's a really, really simple recipe. And remember, if you're using chicken, make sure that the chicken is cooked thoroughly through with some rice, some potatoes. I think it works really well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you tried this recipe. Keep cooking. Look after yourselves. Stay healthy. Eat well. And look after one another. Thanks a million.